A bit of a precursor before I proceed on to the actual content. Most of this is just my thoughts written down into a script, but some of them are just ramblings where I talk to myself that I happen to record. So if at any point in time I start sounding like a broken record, at least you'll know why. Don't get me wrong, I'm not sorry about it. I'm just informing you about how I'm too lazy to reorganize it, and the redundancies throughout this trial of time are all a result of that laziness. So bear with me, and allow me to torture you. Anyways with this, let's officially begin this abomination of a video. Luck is an odd concept that might seem quite simple at first, but as with most concepts, when you delve deeper into it, it becomes quite complicated. I mean, the concept itself is still quite simple as long as you don't think too much of it. But anyways, luck is most commonly recognized as some force that alters probability. More precisely, luck is the observation of probability. And luck and probability are somewhat different things, although interchangeable at times. It's a bit annoying to pinpoint and explain the exact differences, but I think it might be easier to understand if I first do a crash course on probability. Probability is defined as the extent to which something is probable, the likelihood of something happening or being the case. Now, everything in existence is just an endless sequence of events, from the creation of the universe to the death of the stars. And within that infinite sequence, each individual occurrence has a vast list of probabilities for alternative events that could have happened in its place. Now, to make it even easier to comprehend, I'll use examples as usual. Let's use me this time. For me to have been born, it would require my parents to exist, in order to conceive me. Without my parents, I would have never cursed this world with my presence. And without my grandparents, my parents would have never existed, resulting in my existence being denied too. Actually, I think cause and effect might be more accurate of a term than probability now that I've used this example. But anyways, within every cause, there are countless possible effects, along with endless possible causes that can alter the effect, resulting in each effect having a different probability of occurring. Now, say we change the tiny detail in the sequence of events that led to my birth. For example, if you were to change the egg that got fertilized to create me, such a seemingly insignificant change already voids my entire existence replacing me with an entirely different person, or worse, the egg could have just been a dud and nobody would have been born at all. But with just this one example, you can begin to feel the weight of probability in cause and effect, right? Effects are almost always an amalgamation of countless causes intertwined. It's difficult for an effect to have been created by one singular cause. But with that, I think it should be enough for us to start properly talking about luck now. So what exactly is luck? I honestly have no idea. Or rather, it's a bit difficult to fully describe it with words. I mean, everyone knows what luck is in a conventional sense. But the way I see it, luck can be separated into two different interpretations. The first one being luck as a concept, such as getting lucky or getting unlucky and the second interpretation being luck as a supernatural force. Yeah, this should help with making things more coherent. Anyways, I'm fairly interested in both of these interpretations, but I think I'm more curious about the supernatural interpretation. You know, the type that makes your head swirl just thinking about it. God, it's going to take me forever to organize this script, isn't it? But anyways, what I'm curious about specifically is if there actually exists some supernatural force that alters probability to one's favor, or if everything just has a fixed probability that changes according to the flow of events rather than some supernatural force. Now, normally such a superstitious belief, like luck, would just be completely disregarded, like how curses and ghosts are. Which is where things get interesting. For luck, there actually exists some semblance of proof. Certain abnormalities, per se, such as people who seemingly defy probability by repeatedly going against statistically improbable odds. The existence of these people that seemingly defy all odds is part of what made luck a plausibility in the first place. 
Naturally, these cases of improbability spark people's belief in the concept of luck, making luck the closest thing we have to a supernatural force without getting overly occult. I think part of the reason behind the belief in luck is that people want such a thing to exist. After all, who doesn't want good things to exist, especially when it's something that steers things in your favor? Ghosts and curses, on the other hand, are relatively negative beliefs that really wouldn't benefit anyone if they believed in it. To begin with, luck isn't that absurd of a concept when you compare it to spirits and curses. Nevertheless, let's start dissecting luck as a supernatural force. On a simplistic level, the Cambridge Dictionary describes luck as the force that causes things, especially good things, to happen to you by chance and not as a result of your own efforts or abilities. Or to simplify it even more, a force that increases the chance of experiencing improbable events that are to your own benefit. Meanwhile, experiencing improbable events that negatively impact you would just be misfortune, otherwise known as being unlucky. Now, the theories for luck are all over the place. Some people have come up with theories about positively charged particles and negative particles being the manifestations of luck. Or maybe luck is composed of matter that's molecular structure allows for light to pass through it completely unaffected, allowing it to become invisible matter. But in the end, despite these colorful theories, we don't really have a scientific explanation for luck other than observable probability nor do we have any form of tangibility to act as scientific backing. Because of this, luck becomes somewhat perplexing to explore, since it's not exactly feasible to prove the existence of some intangible concept. How do you investigate something that can't be seen, felt, measured, or perceived in any way? So there's not really a way to confirm if some supernatural force like luck actually exists. The only things we do have is theories. Honestly, luck is more so just another concept we attach a name to. But regardless of all that, the real question is, if there's actually a force called luck that affects probabilities, or is life just a messed up game of chance? Nevertheless, one thing remains consistent. The fact that luck is built upon probability. And if there's one thing that I do know, is that any probability can be brute forced to his sheer number of trials or attempts. Winning the lottery is a 1 in 10 million chance, you say. Well then, watch me buy 20 million tickets. I don't have that kind of money, but still. I should probably start wrapping up this segment of explaining what luck is. In my own words, I suppose that the concept of luck is just a superstition that we can improve and alter those probabilities in our favor. But at the same time, it's an imaginary and theoretical concept that alters the probabilities and causality to one's favor. I'm more interested in finding proof that there's some invisible force that alters probabilities. Actually, wait. I think I'll try entertaining the theory of luck being controlled by positively and negatively charged particles. Abiding by this theory would mean that positively charged particles cause lucky events and negatively charged particles cause unlucky events. But then again, the entire concept of luck is centered around events that benefit someone. So if such a scene as positive and negative particles were to exist, they wouldn't exactly work. Since lucky and unlucky events are purely subjective, It's as they say, one man's loss is another man's gain. So, something like a car accident could save a person being mugged by running over the mugger. It wouldn't really work since there's two instances of misfortune and one instance of fortune. Actually, wait, wait, wait. I suppose in theory it could actually work out if the particles were isolated with positive particles surrounding the mugging victim and negative particles surrounding the driver and mugger. Such a scenario would validate the particle theory. But then again, in a scenario where you pick up a rock that has a diamond inside it, if you're unaware of the diamond, would such a scenario be a lucky scenario even if you're unaware of it? 
Actually, it might even be considered an unlucky scenario if you're unaware of it. Maybe you fail to recognize the diamond as a diamond. Or you can just view diamonds as worthless lumps of carbon. And because the diamond holds no value in your eyes, it's neither a lucky or unlucky occurrence. So I suppose in such an event, would there just be neutral particles? Maybe an equal balance of positive and negative particles? Wait... No. I take it all back. I've been thinking about this too much from a human's perspective. I completely forgot about how subjective most human concepts are. The concept of luck is just another one of those arbitrary concepts with no proof of its existence that humans came up with. On a fundamental level, if a supernatural force such as luck did exist, then a human's perceived notion of luck wouldn't have any impact on it. Like... If a person was trying to claim life insurance off of someone, and that someone does end up dying, the death of that person would be perceived as both a lucky and unlucky event. A lucky event for the person trying to claim the life insurance, and an unlucky event for the person that died. So, it would end up creating a contradictory scenario. How do I explain it more clearly? I know what I'm trying to convey, but... God damn it, it's so annoying trying to put stuff like this into words. I... think I'm trying to say that... The entire concept of luck is based on human perspective our notions on what's lucky or unlucky. So if I took humans out of the equation, that would just leave me with animals. And since animals don't create complex concepts or have any perceived notions of what's fortunate or unfortunate, then the concept of luck itself would be void. All that would exist is being at the right place at the right time or being at the wrong place at the wrong time. In those words, coincidence. Yeah, that sounds about right. So if I think about it again, luck is something that does not fundamentally exist within the laws of existence. Ah, hold on a bit. Let's try reorganizing and rephrasing that train of thought just now. Uh, let's see. Since a human's perceived notion of luck is entirely subjective, I don't think there exists an innate force such as luck ingrained within the creation of the universe. The concept of luck only really applies to biological organisms, excluding plants. Damn it, I'm sure there's a more accurate term to use. What was it again? Ah, right. Zoological organisms. But even then, animals don't really perceive events as lucky or unlucky which just means it's a human concept. So when the universe was created, luck didn't exist as a force or concept until humans introduced the concept. I guess at the end of all this, what I'm trying to say is that there inherently exists no supernatural force called luck. But the concept of luck itself still exists since the concept was something humans came up with. Say for example, winning the lottery. There's not actually a force that affects your chances of winning the lottery. But if you do win, humans are still going to perceive such an event as a lucky one, even if luck doesn't fundamentally exist. Luck is an observable phenomenon for humans. The notion of luck as a concept and term is still applicable, despite luck being a non-existent force. Meaning that my spiel just now invalidates one of my two original interpretations of luck, leaving me with only the conceptual one. Everything is still based off of probability. The only difference now is knowing that there exists no supernatural force that can help push those odds in your favor. In the end, you winning the lottery was just the result of a series of events that led to you getting your hands on a winning lottery ticket. A single change in that series of events could have resulted in the ticket ending up in someone else's possession. So winning the lottery ends up being nothing more than a mere coincidence. There was no supernatural force influencing those events.
The only forces affecting that series of events was just the interactions of everything else in the physical world. Mmm. Oh, this is really hurting my brain. But I think you get what I'm saying, right? Or at least I hope you do. This entire scene is a sloppy mess. Welcome to my mind, I guess. Anyways, I think I've rambled on about the same scene for long enough. I'm just repeating myself at this point and going in circles. So let's change things up. Allow me to go into more detail on how exactly luck affects you personally. Or rather, probability, I guess, since I've gone and disproved the existence of luck. But anyways, I think you know what's coming. Yep, that's right. I'm gonna be using even more examples. Now, just a quick recap. Luck doesn't fundamentally exist. What I'll be talking about from this point forward is just a concept of luck or probability, aka the notion created by humans, and how this notion applies to your life. And again, your life is an infinite sequence of events. Some within your control, but the majority are completely uncontrollable. Like when you take a walk outside. There are countless possibilities you could experience, but the outcome that has the highest probability to happen is just a normal walk, without anything eventful happening. Nevertheless, other possibilities when going on a walk include getting chased by a dog, getting hit by a car, Experiencing abuse of power from local law enforcement. Picking up $100 from the ground or even meeting your soulmate. These are just five of the possible outcomes from taking a walk. Each with significantly different probabilities of happening. Now being lucky would mean that the last two outcomes are more likely to happen. You can increase those two outcomes by either walking a longer distance or being more observant of your surroundings so you're more likely to spot money lying on the ground. Of course, it goes without saying that walking a longer distance also increases the probability of the unlucky outcomes happening to you. Your own actions have a minimal effect at best, but other circumstances can have varying degrees of effect on the probabilities. For example, if you lived in Antarctica or are stranded on some deserted island, Your current circumstances would mean that all the possible outcomes I was just talking about are virtually impossible. Hypothetically, those outcomes could still happen since you can never truly reduce a probability to zero, but it would require an exceedingly low consecutive series of preposterous events to happen. Wind could somehow pick up a hundred dollars and drop it off exactly where you are. Some bird could accomplish the same thing. A carrier plane shipping cars could fly overhead and a cargo ramp could malfunction and open, dropping a car on you. The point is, any scenario you can imagine has a certain probability of happening. They just require ridiculous circumstances to happen. And most circumstances are completely out of your control. I mean seriously. How can you control a carrier plane's flight route? The best you can do is not be at the place where the car falls. But even then, the place you relocate to could also end up being the drop side of a car, which would just be a completely ludicrous chance of happening. Despite this, it's still entirely possible. But anyways, enough of those surface level scenarios. Regardless of whether or not luck actually exists, it doesn't change the fact that the outcomes in your life are ruled over by probabilities that you can affect at varying degrees. And everything in existence being a sequence of events means everything is also controlled by probability, aka luck. And I mean everything. No matter how much of a fixed probabilities, or how much you think something is set in stone, the possibility of something interfering with that event exists, no matter how small. So I'll use some more examples. Not necessarily more complicated ones, but more so... How should I put this? Ah, I got it. More elaborate examples. Say you want to rip a normal piece of paper in half. Quite possibly the most mundane action one could take. Anywho, you would still occasionally fail to rip that piece of paper in half on the first try. Like tearing at just the one angle where you crumple and cave the paper in on itself. You know what? Forget this example. This one sucks. Let me try again. Why are you ripping that piece of paper? Another factor outside of your control can interfere with your paper ripping. 
like a car crashing through the walls of your house and killing you, so the piece of paper ends up never getting ripped in half by you. Or a wild sibling tackling you out of the blue. You get the gist of things, right? Ripping that piece of paper in half is basically guaranteed to happen, unless some outside interference disrupts that action. And just as how it's possible for something to disrupt your paper ripping, it's equally possible that some random phenomenon can end up killing you, like an earthquake. No matter how absurdly low the possibility is, there's always a chance of interference from events outside of your control. I mean, the best example I can think of to represent factors completely outside of your control are meteorites. At any given moment, the possibility of a meteor crushing you exists, albeit an extremely low chance. 1 in 840 million, according to Google. No matter what you do in life, you can't escape the possibility of being hit by a meteor. I mean, you could become a vault dweller. But would it really be worth living a life underground just to eliminate that 1 in 840 million chance? Not to mention that doing such a thing will only shield you from smaller meteors. Living in a vault isn't going to help you survive another dinosaur level extinction meteor. So even if you resorted to such an extreme method, you still wouldn't be completely safe. But anyways, on a bit of a side note, a lot of fictional characters with luck as their superpower demonstrate the effects of luck surprisingly well. So maybe check out some of those if you prefer something more organized than the boggled mess known as every word that comes out of my mouth. Actually, wait. Hold that thought. I just thought of a much better example. The most basic demonstration of probability. The coin flip. Generally speaking, a coin flip is a 50-50 chance. But that's only in a perfectly controlled environment. You have to account for a variety of environmental factors otherwise. Like air resistance, wind force. Not to mention that there exists the possibility of the coin somehow landing on its edge. A coin standing on its edge is statistically impossible. But something being impossible is ironically impossible itself. At least in most cases it is. Anyways, the more accurate term would be statistically improbable. In theory, you can manipulate a coin flip by controlling the strengths you flip the coin at. If you obtain a certain level of consistency, you can effectively manipulate the odds in your favor. But it's practically impossible to manipulate the odds to be 100% in your favor, especially when you're using that crude biomass you call a hand. The only way to do so would be through the purity of the blessed machine, programmed with absolutely perfect mechanisms and precision, in a perfect vacuum. But perfection is impossible to achieve. You'll get more on the impossibility of perfection in the future when I get the motivation to finally finish that godforsaken video. In any case, the coin flipping contraption can rust or malfunction, joints can lock up, wiring can loosen, and creating a perfect vacuum is simply unfeasible. So you can only get infinitesimally close to a 100% chance of landing on only one side. I think this example itself should be sufficient for us to continue. Anyways, now that you've had somewhat of a crash course, I think it's time we take the elevator and go a few floors deeper into seeing how luck affects your life. Now, I've said this before, so it might sound repetitive, but existence is just a massive and infinite sequence of probabilities and events. And since your life is just another sequence of events, Probability is applied to every aspect of your life. From the moment you're born, you've already been subjected to the mercy of luck. You could be born with a golden spoon, silver spoon, or wooden spoon. You could be born with a blessed physique, some disability, or some disease like progeria. You could be born with a literal death sentence, or even worse, you might just be a stillborn, meaning you died before you were even born. I think you've got a pretty good idea of just how impactful luck is in your life by now, right? I mean, all of this was just possibilities involved in your birth. The literal, official starting point of life. So we haven't even begun to scratch the surface of causality. Now, if you made it past birth, then literally every second of the rest of your life is reliant on luck. Countless bacteria and viruses are constantly swarming in the air around you. 
If you just so happen to be in the wrong place at the wrong time, and your body fails to defend against the invasion, then it's game over for you. In fact, as soon as you're born, your cells are already dividing and your DNA is replicating itself. And every time your DNA replicates, there's a chance of it making a mistake, causing a DNA mutation. However, instead of superpowers, you get cancer. Cancer is your superpower. But maybe you get luckier in life and ended up with a slightly less detrimental disease, like Huntington's disease or muscular dystrophy. Do you still suck? but you have a better life expectancy at least. Or you could just make it past the infancy stage without getting a death sentence and live a normal life. But keep in mind, every second your body is running some biological function, and every time your body does so, you're rolling the dice of fate. But anyways, moving on how from luck turns your body into a ticking time bomb, let's focus on the finer aspects of life. The concept of luck applies to anything with probability. So as long as we're talking about luck conceptually, luck and probability can be used fairly interchangeably without changing the meaning of a sentence too much. Even the most controlled factors are affected by luck, no matter how much control you think you have. If you watched my awful video about the concept of infinity, then you can just apply infinity to probability and luck then you'll probably have a far better understanding of just how much your life is governed by luck. If you haven't watched it, go give me some views. It's less of a mess than this one. Anyways, as far as examples go, there was one time where I had a multiple choice exam. I took one look at the exam sheet and saw it had 70 questions. And I thought to myself, well, shit. Eh, surely it can't be that bad. I should know some of them at least. Long story short, I knew the answers to five of the questions. I guessed on the rest. As for how I guessed, I used a coin. Heads for A or B, and tails for C or D. Then whichever one I landed on, I'd ask the same thing except for only A and B or C and D. Anyways, I ended up getting a 66%. If that's not luck, I don't know what is. Now, I could have studied to make the exam not be solely reliant on a game of chance. But on account of me being dumber than a little bag of rocks, I never study. And in all fairness, most of my exams follow the same pattern. But anyways, my life is mostly just a comedic series of somewhat unfortunate events, was the only aspect of my life I hold any semblance of luck in being the part I hate the most. Education. If you took a rock and bashed someone's brains in, the rock would have more brain cells than I do. So, I've always barely managed to scrape by with a passing grade through the power of bullshittery and luck. How else do you think I've been managing to upload videos without being disowned by my parents? And as much as I need that luck, I would still rather have that luck go towards my crippling gotcha addiction. But man, all this talk about luck has gotten me wondering about people that miraculously survive accidents that would have most certainly resulted in deaths. People say that they're lucky to have survived, but can you really call them lucky? I mean, think about it. If they really were as lucky as people say they are, then they wouldn't have even been put into that situation in the first place, right? I like to think that near-death scenarios are just the universe screwing these people. Like, oopsies, didn't mean to do that. Oh boy, we just put someone who wasn't supposed to die yet into a final destination scenario. And let's fix that and balance things out by having them survive without a scratch. So, I guess you can't really call them lucky since the misfortune and fortune sort of cancel each other out. Anyways, back on topic. Stuff like studying, working, training, all that is just building up experience to increase your chances. Your entire life is just you dedicating your efforts into fighting against luck. No matter how well you've perfected a skill, or how much time you spend mastering something. There always exists the possibility of some probability outside of your control being your downfall. That 0.001% chance you can never get rid of. You could spend all your life living the scientifically healthiest lifestyle possible, and one day you could wake up with cancer, or just never wake up, which, fun fact, a perfectly healthy person, and I mean you could be the literal physical embodiment of health and you could still suddenly drop dead for no reason at all. Just like that. Instant death. 
Now, I mentioned earlier about barely even scratching the surface of the significance of probability. So allow me to grab a jackhammer and just completely demolish that surface. Now that I've done that, let me ask you. You've heard of the saying, sink bigger, right? Well, how about we do the exact opposite of that and sink smaller? Much smaller. I'm thinking maybe somewhere on the microscopic scale. Actually, how about we just include everything smaller than the microscopic scale? Anyways, by just breathing in, you're displacing roughly 25 sextillion oxygen molecules, or 50 sextillion atoms, not to mention the countless microorganisms contained in that breath. Every time you breathe, you're inhaling thousands or millions of those microorganisms, and every time you sneeze, you're effectively committing genocide. Now, your breathing also disrupts the airflow. And if you've heard of the butterfly effect, just imagine how much more impactful the movements of a human are, or the wing flaps of an albatross are, compared to the tissue paper thin wings of a butterfly. Every scene in existence is connected by some bizarre relationship, where completely unrelated events happening everywhere are somehow affecting each other. The flutter from a butterfly's wings a few thousand miles away could ever so slightly shift the air currents, creating a gust of wind where you are that disrupts the flight patterns of bugs or birds, altering their paths, so they just so happen to fly directly into your mouth at just the right time, leading to you choking to death on a bug. Just imagine death, being murdered by a butterfly. It might seem like a ridiculous notion, but it's quite possible, and there would be no way to know if you got murdered by a butterfly. After all, it's nigh impossible to trace back every minuscule event and figure out how each and every event is connected to another. Just imagine if such a scene like reading the flow of events was possible. You'd get a pretty terrifying serial killer that can make your death seem like a complete accident by merely shifting a few seemingly random objects. That would ultimately lead to your untimely demise. Not to mention that the entire biological system of your body is just a ticking time bomb waiting to go off at the slightest mistake. It's funny how a seemingly minor and insignificant change in your life could have resulted in drastically different results. That one time you chose to turn left instead of right could have been the moment you decided between life and death. If you had gone right, it's quite possible that something could have killed you there and then. Every decision you make in the countless crossroads of life matters. Each decision leads to an entirely different chain of events. Once you've made that decision, you can't go back. Maybe in the future, one of your decisions can bring you back into the past that one of your previous decisions would have led to. Who knows? So, what should you gain from my ramblings? Well. Turns out luck is nothing more than another arbitrary supernatural concept, like ghosts and gods. The only difference is that we know for certain now that the supernatural force known as luck does in fact not exist. The concept of luck however still exists. You can still be lucky or unlucky. There's just no force that influences that. And if we disregard all that, there's no harm or foul in believing that a supernatural force like luck actually exists. You can buy little trinkets or lucky charms, as long as you aren't obsessing over them and investing your life savings into them like some madman. Belief in supernatural stuff is a way for people to help maintain their mentality. Having a calmer mentality can help improve your overall performance. So in a way, lucky trinkets do end up making you technically lucky. Just having some sort of lucky charm or heirloom can help you achieve peace of mind. This whole scene was nothing more than the ravings of an insomniac. I don't really know what I'm talking about either. The concept of luck was just something I developed a sudden interest in, and felt like going on a spiel about, even if I did end up learning nothing of value. But as for what you should learn from this, well, every action has an effect. The effect might affect you, or affect something else. The actions of something else could also end up affecting you. Turns out life is just a massive game of chance. So, 
I guess you can try spending your life dedicating your efforts into meticulously planning out the best possible courses of actions to take in order to better your life. Or you can just be lucky and breeze through life by rolling a nat 20 in every scene. But anyways, I don't think I can break down the effects of probability any more than I already have. And dear god am I going to have a lot of editing to do. Anyways, if you still fail to understand how probability or luck affects your life, then shame on you. I'm ending the video here.